One more bit of advice. Shh. Quiet. Mr. Garza, last night, got a hold of me because he was having difficulty finding the lecture because he left a little early for his music issue. And I have found out that if you just go to YouTube straight, if you're having trouble with the website, if you go to YouTube straight and just put in Dur Lectures, you can find it easier than I think maybe sometimes going on the site. Okay? So, just a tip. If that's what you're looking at, and if you we've been we've been doing these like we did Kennedy assassination one, assassination two, assassination three, then we did post assassination one, two, and three, and Mr. McGee will put this in order. I can't remember, and we'll also add review to this. So if you actually type that in a search, you'll find it easy. Okay, just a tip. Okay, all right. In your in your photo here, Mr. Kroger, who's number one? Malcolm Kilda. Very good. Who's number two, Mr. Mortimer? Who was number three, Miss Doyle? And what was Jack Valente? Just give me just one thing about it. Didn't write that down? He was from the press and he was a really important person from Hollywood. He, that's very good. He picked that up and that what else? He was Johnson's uh, special assistant. He was a specialist in Johnson. Very good over the body. Not messing up anymore. Hey, just before I before we get any farther. I have ordered Krispy Kreme donuts for the anniversary of the assassination on the 22nd of November. So we will have those, so I don't want to hear any more about donuts and over the bottom. <laughs> Who'd you buy them from? I bought them from Jason Beck, first guy to talk to me. Ooh, so when are they going to be here? Miss, 22nd of November. So, okay, Miss Newfer, who's number four? Albert Thomas. Very good. Who's number five, Phoenix? Marie Dunbar. Yep, and who was she? She's a personal secretary. Very good. Who is number six there, Carly? Lady Bird Johnson. Number seven, Brittany? Uh, Lindsay B. Johnson. And who is number eight there, Haley? Ms. Kennedy. Who was number nine, Kylie? Uh, and what were some things about Homer Thornberry, a name I would not want? He was a former congressman from Texas who was appointed Thank you very much. Now, number 10 is hard to see very, very well. You can see her glasses, kind of, and it looks like it might even be part of Mrs. Kennedy's hair, but it's actually, you can just kind of see her right eye and glasses. Do you see that? That is Evelyn Lincoln. That is Kennedy's personal secretary. Very, very hard to see her, and it was kind of tougher because I was trying not to cover her face with the number. But that's Evelyn Lincoln. Number 11, you can kind of see... Number 11 back there, just kind of a hat, you can see his left eye and ear, see him? That is Roy Kellerman, that was the Secret Service agent that was in charge of the Dallas Secret Service that day. What? Roy Kellerman, he is number 11. And you can kind of see the, the numbers above his head, you can see kind of his left eye and his ear. Everybody see him? Okay, number 12. Number 12 is Lem Johns. Lem Johns. He was a Secret Service agent that was assigned to protect Vice President Johnson. So number 12 is Lem Johns, who was a Secret Service agent assigned to President, or excuse me, to Vice President Johnson. It's on your sheet. It's on your sheet. Yep. If you haven't heard of them before, they're on your sheet. Here's kind of, I'm throwing this in, but I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. Number 13, now look on your, your photo. The bottom right-hand corner of the square where 13 is kind of points right at her eye. You can't see her face very well. Do you see her? That is Pamela, Pamela Tunyer. Pam, Pamela Tunyer, excuse me. Pamela Tunyer. And she was a personal assistant to Jackie Kennedy, Pamela Tunyer. She also was rumored to what? Had an affair with the president, yeah. So she was a personal assistant to Jackie Kennedy, rumored to have had an affair with the president. Again, rumored. Shh. 14. 
is Jack Brooks. You have a good picture of 14. See him very well. Jack Brooks, who's on your ID sheet. He was a congressman from Texas. He was also in the motorcade during the assassination. But the remarkable thing about Jack Brooks, and this is in 1963, he served 42 years in the House of Representatives. This was his first term. He served 42 years. How often is a representative elected? Every how many years? Two. Two. He served 42 years, so you can imagine, you know, that he had quite a career. 15, and you can only see kind of the top of his head a little bit, is Bill Moyers. Bill Moyers. Now, at the time of the president's assassination, he was a journalist. He also, in 1961, was appointed... Associate Director of the Peace Corps. So he was a journalist who was appointed Associate Director of the Peace Corps by President Kennedy in 1961. Now the significance about Moyers, who was a journalist and Associate Director of the Peace Corps, created in 1961, is that who's the press secretary now? Now? No, not now, but in, oh. now in history. Oh, Pierre Salger. This, this individual, Bill Moyers, became press secretary for Johnson from 1965 to 1967. He was Johnson's press secretary during Johnson's second term. In other words, the, the term that he was elected on his own in 64. Okay? So he became White House press secretary, Bill Moyers. And who's number years? six? What's that? From what year? 65 to 67. And who's number 16? We've talked about him. You can see he's right behind Vice President, soon to be President Johnson's hand, with the glasses, gave a speech before the President arrived in Dallas. What's that? No, not a speech. I, I, that's a good guess because I said speech. Not a speech, but a public announcement. Police Chief Jesse Curry is 16. Police Chief Jesse Curry. Now again... I'm not going to make you know who these people are for a test. I just think it's good information. If you're going to take this class that you have an idea was who was in that famous photograph. Yes? Where's Kenneth O'Donnell? One more time. Where's Kenneth O'Donnell? Kenneth O'Donnell. Where is Kenneth O'Donnell? And I want to add this because I kind of messed it up. I didn't tell you the whole story yesterday because we kind of got wound up. Very good question. What did Mrs. Johnson... No. Shh. What did Mrs. Johnson and Vice President Johnson do while they were trying to find the federal judge to swear him in. They went to talk to Jackie, right? Try to get her to change. She chose not to. Well, here's the story. Kenneth O'Donnell, very good question, was with Mrs. Kennedy. And when they first came and talked to her about being in the picture, Kenneth O'Donnell spoke for her and said, no, she's been through too much, she will not. And Jackie politely said, it's the least I can do. And that's when they asked her if she might want to clean up, and she said no. So O'Donnell, great question, was with O'Donnell and Powers, David Powers were both with Mrs. Kennedy at this time. Okay? All right, so what time did you get sworn in? Um, 2.38. Finally, at 2.46 p.m., Air Force One departed Love Field for where? Washington, D.C. 2.46 p.m., Air Force One departed for Washington, D.C. 2.46. What a long day it's been, has it not? How long of a flight is that? We'll tell you in just a minute. So that's 2.46 Central Standard Time. Okay, we're still in Texas time, right? After a president dies, what does his wife do? Okay. We'll get to all that. That's a good question, but we'll get to all that. Oh, we have a question. What? So when Johnson invented this, he start like four years and it just finished Kennedy's He finishes Kennedy's term and then will run in 64. Okay? Now, at 3 o'clock, President Johnson, right? At 3 o'clock, weird ring, but at 3 o'clock, President Johnson asked one of his aides to please call Rose Kennedy, who is the president's mother. So at 3 o'clock, President Johnson asked one of his aides if they would not please get Mrs. Kennedy on the line. 
Because he has not talked to Mrs. Kennedy, and now he's the new president. What's his Rose. Rose. Here is the conversation. But you don't have to write it down, but listen and comprehend. LBJ, when, the, when he gets on the phone, LBJ says, Mrs. Kennedy, Rose Kennedy says, Yes, Mr. President. LBJ says, I wish to God there was something that I could do, and I wanted to tell you that we're grieving with you. Rose Kennedy's response, Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know, I know you love Jack, and he loved you. President Johnson at that time became so emotional he could not talk anymore and he handed the phone to Lady Bird. He just, he couldn't do it. He, could, he, was, he just got very emotional. So Lady Bird said to Rose, we are glad that the nation had your son as long as it did. And Rose Kennedy's response was, well, yes, well, thank you Lady Bird, thank you much, goodbye. And Lady Bird finished the conversation by saying love and prayers to all of you. Now, You'll get a chance to hear this conversation as we show you different videotape. But Mrs. Kennedy again showed what? No. The stoic, Kennedys don't cry, no. motion. Well, it's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So Brandy asked how long to take. We went 246, 346, 446, 546, and it's an hour this way, right? So it was about two, a little over two hours, you know, two, almost three hours, right? Is that right? 246, 346, 446, 546, yeah, but you lose an hour. So just two hour, two and a half hours about. Air Force One landed at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. That was 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All these other times have been what? Central, Central Standard Time. So at Eastern, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why do I say Eastern Standard Time now? Because that's where we're at. We're in Washington, okay? As soon as that airplane, airplane landed, who met the aircraft immediately? Bobby. Robert Kennedy. And he boarded the jet. He immediately pushed his way to the back of the plane where Jackie was seated. He just, I mean, he was on that plane lickety-split. They were taking the president's body out the back end of the plane. He entered the front end of the plane as soon as it landed, and he pushed by everybody to get to the back to get to Jackie. One of the people he pushed right by without even acknowledging him was who? Johnson. The new president, Johnson. He, was, he claims he was just in such a hurry to get to Mrs. Kennedy. Johnson would probably go on record as saying he felt he was snubbed. Okay, and he probably was. But Bobby boarded the jet in the front and immediately pushed his way to the back of the plane where Jackie was seated. And he pushed right by the new president, didn't even look up to acknowledge he was there. Now, Johnson was a political guru. He did things well politically, and he had a plan that he and Mrs. Kennedy would exit the aircraft together with the body of the slain president. He thought that would look presidential, okay? So he had this in his mind, that he would go back, get Mrs. Kennedy, they would, they would exit the plane, which they did out the back, and he would exit with Mrs. Kennedy and the body. Well, Robert Kennedy would have no part of it. He had no interest in that. And that was even a bigger snub that Johnson never forgot the rest of his life. So what happened, in essence, is a lift truck. It was a truck with a big box, huge box, like a semi-truck with both ends out. And it, it wasn't really a truck. It was, on, it was, it was kind of like on, it was on wheels, kind of like you see the airport things. If they put your luggage in, only like twice, three times, four times as big. And they pushed that lift truck up to the open door of the back of the aircraft and they took President Kennedy's casket out and unloaded it on this, and you'll see video of it, on this uh, lift truck. And it came down, Mrs. Kennedy, uh, and Bobby was with Mrs. Kennedy, Lawrence O'Brien, you can see him in the video, Kenneth O'Donnell and David Powers, you can see in the video, as they load the President's casket on the lift truck, then it lifts it down to the ground, and then they put it in a, an ambulance, and they're heading where? For the what? Autopsy. They're actually heading to Bethesda Naval Hospital to do the autopsy. Now, Johnson, I mean, Bobby Kennedy just got the, the Kennedy entourage, took the body off the plane, put it in the ambulance, and took off. They just left Johnson stand there holding the bag. They had no interest in that, which was incredibly embarrassing to the new president. So again, 
A lift truck edged up to the open door of the aircraft and the bronze casket bearing the body of President Kennedy was unloaded. The casket was placed in an ambulance with Robert and Jackie Kennedy and it was taken to Bethesda Naval Hospital for the autopsy. Now why did it go to Bethesda? Anybody want to guess? Yeah. What? Bethesda. Mm -hmm. what, why'd they go there? Is that the same place that his son died? No. Is it a, What's that? Well, they, yeah, there's a lot of hospitals that do the, to do it. Why'd they take him? Why'd he take him there? Because it's a Navy hospital, and where did the president serve in the service? He was a naval officer. And also, just so you know, was the official hospital during his presidency. If the president was sick or had a cold or had to do it, you know, any have any issues, he went to that particular hospital. Okay? So, so Bethesda was chosen for the autopsy because President Kennedy had been a naval officer and it was his official hospital during his presidency. Now, conspiracy theorists will tell you the reason they took it to Bethesda was because they wanted to do their own autopsy. They wanted to cover up evidence and all that kind of crap. And so, and, and it is a legitimate beef, is that an autopsy in Dallas would have, done by, would have been done by civilian doctors, correct? These doctors were what type of doctors? Military doctors who were under what? Orders. Okay? And I'll tell you, they couldn't emphasize enough in the autopsy that no one in that room was to, they had to sign, uh, what do they kind of call it, paper, silent, uh, waiver? No. Oath of silence Yeah, but they had even a more cruder term. It's a uh, um, gag order. They had to sign gag orders saying that they would not say anything about the autopsy once they left. Now, so where's President Johnson? Well, he's kind of bewildered. He finally leaves the aircraft after the Kennedys had departed with Lady Bird and his entourage of people that were his aides and political advisors. And what he does is, that, and this kind of ticked off the Kennedys too, he made arrangements as the plane, plane was flying to have the media there so he could, they could film this. Because his plan was he was going to walk off that plane with Mrs. John, or Mrs. Kennedy and the body and it was going to be very, look very good politically. So he had called ahead and had the media there and they had a place where he was going to speak in the whole nine yards and it didn't happen that way. So here's all the media and the place for the president to speak and so he does. So at 6.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lyndon Johnson gave his first public speech as president of the United States. 6.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lyndon Johnson gave his first public speech as president of the United States. Where's Kennedy's body and the Kennedys? En route to Bethesda. Yep. Here is parts of Kennedy's or, uh, Johnson's speech. It was not very long, but here, here is uh, the la latter part of it. He said, quote, This is a sad time for all people. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know the world shares in the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all I can do. I ask your help and God's. That was his speech. And then he became the 36th, really the president of the United States. Okay, does anybody have any questions about any of that? Okay, we're going to have a review here. Okay? If you listen very carefully to this review, you will do very well on the test. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Okay, good question. Hey, Zach has a good question. Go ahead. Yeah, didn't you say that one of the Secret Service members were supposed to keep them away from the radio? Yes. Um, Tom Webb. Zach has a great question. Tom Webb was the Secret Service agent in charge of the Kennedy children. And he was ordered to keep the children away from TVs and that type of stuff until their mother could get back and in her own way explain what had happened. So Tom Webb was back with the children in Washington and he kept them occupied and away from any media so they did not find out. Okay? All right, here we go. These are short answer questions. They will, there will be 30 answers on this test. Three points apiece, 90 points, and two extra credit questions for two points apiece that I dug deep for that if you were listening, you might get. Are we ready? All right, Mr. Garza. 
When the police found a sniper's post on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository, how far was that position from the presidential limousine in the motorcade? 88 yards. Yes. So get the start of your notes and this will go smoothly for you. Okay, Mr. Armstrong, if you would please tell me, explain the two pieces of evidence that were found on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. Two pieces of it's actually more than two pieces, but two specific things. Uh, the three empty uh, shells. Three spent cartridges. And the stack of books that the gun was laying on. Okay, that we, we that. We already kind of got that in number one, so I'm looking for something else. They found three spent cartridges, and they found the they found the rifle. Okay, so the, the evidence that was found on the sixth floor of the Texas School Depository wasn't the book stack. It was one, three spent shells, and two, the rifle. Do we okay? have to know the specific name? No, yeah, that'd be pretty impressive if you could, but you don't have to. Just, uh, the, the assassin's, the assassin's yeah. rifle. Okay, Mr. Logan, shh. We haven't got much time. We've got to get through this or you're not going to get a review. Mr. Logan, who did police officers summon after the rifle was found on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository? Oh, wasn't it He's got a signature up on the board up here. Up on that right here, so he says Jim Hurley for Congress. His signature is right under that on a JFK first issue stand. Who was it? Should be right in your notes. Did you get him? No. Really? That'll be interesting how the test goes for you, Mark. Over the body. What? <laughs> Who was the man that they summoned as soon as they found the rifle? It's got to be right in your notes. It might be good to get them out and write this down. It might be beneficial. Mr. Tashima. J.C. Day. Very good. Okay, at the time of his capture, Bobby, explain what Lee Harvey Oswald had in his possession and what he left at the residence that his estranged wife was staying at. What did he have in his possession and what two items did he leave at the residence? Thirteen dollars and thirteen dollars and eighty-seven cents. That's what he had in his possession. What did he leave at the residence? Shh. And his wallet with a hundred and eighty dollars. His ring, his wedding ring, wedding ring, which is significant, and his wallet with how much money in it? You were close. You said it once. Minus ten. Hundred and seventy dollars in his wallet. Sadie, who was the Dallas medical examiner that first insisted that President Kennedy's autopsy be done in Dallas according to Texas state law? Earl Rose. Earl Rose. Very good. Miss Butterfield, give me one of the three reasons that Secret Service agent Roy Kellerman insisted that President Kennedy's body be immediately taken back to Washington, D.C. Okay, second reason, Augie? Third reason, Danae. Jackie wouldn't leave without Kennedy's body. Thank you very much. Very good. Miss Mondragon, who made the final decision that President Kennedy's body would be taken back to Washington? Kenneth O'Donnell. Kenneth O'Donnell. Very good. Miss Richardson, who was President Kennedy's chief military aide in Dallas who insisted that Air Force One depart the instant the fallen president's body was on board? Was it Admiral George Berkeley? Nope. No. General, keep going to farther your notes. Brittany? Uh, Godfrey McHugh. What? General Godfrey. General Godfrey McHugh. Okay, he was the military aide that insisted they leave. Who was the federal judge who administered the oath of office to Vice President Johnson aboard Air Force One, Carly? Um, Sarah. 
Sarah T. Hughes. Miss Montoya, what was the significance of Cecil Stout? What was the significance of Cecil Stout? Um, who took picture. the famous picture uh, of Johnson Bean yeah. administered the oath of office. He was <laughs> official White House photographer who took the famous picture of Johnson Bean administered the oath of office. Those are your short answer questions. I'll be on the test exactly like that. No. We're halfway home. Oh. Anyway. All right. Who's turning? Okay, thank you. Sean Mortimer, fill in the blank. After the assassination, Lee Harvey Oswald left the Texas School Book Depository and traveled east on Elm Street. He then boarded a city bus at what time? Twelve forty p.m. According to bus driver Kellen Cecil McWaters. Very good. So you might just highlight these in your notes, Mr. Kroger. Fill in the blanks. Because of heavy traffic after the assassination in downtown Dallas, Oswald left the bus at twelve forty-four p.m. Walked to a nearby Greyhound bus station and caught a what? Taxi. Taxi cab. At what time, Jacob? Twelve forty-seven. Very good. Mr. Armstrong, Oswald then asked the taxi driver to take him to the 500 block of North Beckley Street in the what section of Dallas? Oak Hills. Close. Oak. Won't get you anything tomorrow, but today it'll get you another chance. Oak. <laughs> Oak. <laughs> Help him. Oak, Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. Oh. Section. As you cannot, you cannot forget that tomorrow. Now, oh my God. Okay. Okay. In the Oak Cliff section of Dallas, Mr. Logan, Oswald left the taxi cab and walked to his boarding house, arriving at 12:59 p.m. and left at 1:03 p.m. According to who? Uh, yeah, that will not work tomorrow. Over the Bowdy. You guys are 0 for 2 today so far. Mr. Tashima. Erlene Roberts. Erlene. Erlene. Your sheet. This doesn't seem that funny. Okay, continuing on, Mr. Bryan. I can quit any time. Okay. Mr. Bryan, at what time did Oswald meet up with a Dallas police officer? And what was the name of that police officer, Miss Wassum? J.E. Tippett. J.E. Tippett. Anybody, know, anybody want to know what that stands for? Southerner. Take a guess. Southerner. What's, what was his real name? James Daniel. No, Southerner. Confederate Southerner. Ooh. Oh, um, Jefferson. Something. <laughs> Who was the president of the Confederacy? Oh. If you don't know this, you shouldn't have got one ounce of Northwest College credit. Who was the Jefferson. Who was the president of the South in the Civil War? Jefferson. Davis. Davis. His name was Jefferson Davis. <laughs> Jefferson Davis Tippett. No wonder they called him J.D. All right. Starting over. At 1.15 p.m., Oswald met up with Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett at 10th Street and Patton Avenue. After summoning Oswald to his police car, the officer walked around the vehicle to confront Oswald. Oswald then shot the officer how many times today, killing him instantly? Four. Okay. Three times basically in the chest area and once in the head to finish him off. Whoop. Okay, next. That's why these are $1.50. Do we don't have to know where these are? I might know that. It might be extra credit. Okay, Augie. Oswald then discarded his coat and took off on a fast walk towards eyewitness who, who covered her eyes with her hands in fear as Oswald approached her. Helen Markham. Very good, Helen Markham. 
Miss Butterfield, who was the next person who saw Oswald who went to the scene of the shooting and found the police officer dead? Uh, Ted Calloway. Ted Calloway. And Morgan, who was the manager of the shoe store in Oak Cliff who watched Oswald enter his store and depart heading down to the Texas Theater? Who was that guy? Johnny Brewer. Johnny Brewer. Oswald then walked right past cashier who, Kylie, and seated himself in the back row of the theater? Julia Postal. Julia Postal. Very good. Miss hmm. Richardson, who was the officer along with other police officers that arrived at the scene after Julia Postal called the police? Um, I'm Ann McDonald. M N. I get that wrong, so M and McDonald. Just think of alphabetical order. What time did the officer approach Oswald Blake? Uh, 1.50. And he asked him to stand up. After a short struggle in which Oswald pulled his gun, he was subdued and taken to Dallas Police Headquarters. He was first charged with the murder of who? And then the murder of? John Kennedy. John Kennedy. Perfect. What All right. If, M and Nick. Matthew, Nick. 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 Oh, what was Matthias. 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 If there's ever two people with the same last name, you are mandated to have the first name. What's the, what was the thing with M.N. McDonald? He was the guy that subdued Oswald. Oh, never mind. Okay, get out your JFK books, your magazine.